moving to oneness. Nourishing curiosity. Embracing differences. Becoming one. You're in for a treat. I have two beautiful beings. I was just amazed by their radiance and I'm still glowing myself because I'm synchronizing <laughs> to this radiance. Everyone, do join in to this beautiful episode with two beings from a totally different cultures that in my eyes are stand-up dolls and I do have to say I do fit in a little bit so it will be an adventure in a tickling out what makes them a stand-up doll and you may find little tips and tricks to stand up faster yourself as well so everyone hello and welcome to the moving to oneness a podcast I'm Mylene your host and let's invite with a huge embrace <laughs> uh, Bertha, uh, Bertha Beth, I hope I yes. right. I, uh, yeah. Everyone knows me on my podcast. Uh, speaking and words are sometimes not very easy for me, but my love for you is really, really intense. <laughs> <laughs> and James Arthur Ray on the show all the way from Nevada to bring you the gift of resilience and this gift of unending clear 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 bright brilliance that comes and will come out of you after you've listened to both of them thank you uh, both of you for coming and taking your time to speak with me and my audience hello Hi, thank you for having us. It's an honor to be here, and we look we're looking forward to this conversation. Thank you, Mylene. Yeah, I, that's a that's a tall order. You no pressure, yeah, no um, pressure. On but, us. but we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll do certainly do our best to, yeah. to up to that. <laughs> no, you know, it. I, I popped up, or you popped up in Zoom, and uh, many people are watching also the episodes on on video. And if mm. you are listening right now. This for sure is going to be a show to uh, watch, at least for a few moments. Hop over to the YouTube station or channel of Moving to Oneness, and you can see that light shining out, vibrating out, and touching many and many. It comes, I think, in both of you for a clear dedication and uh, that you are living your purpose here on this planet and that nothing can take you away of it or push you aside. So that's what I sense. And so I invite everyone synchronize <laughs> with both of them. I would say she's very good intuitive. <laughs> yeah. Bear, Bear was quite a, quite a gifted intuitive as well. So for her to tell you that you're kind of, you're very intuitive is, is a compliment uh, because uh... Yeah, She's very gifted in that area. Didn't. That's wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, James, you have probably many stories uh, to tell, but when I uh, read a little bit into both of you, what came the strongest right away is this relationship that you have. The relationship that you see each other. And you see the strengths and you see in each other what is not lived yet. And I think that's something you pushed or nudged each other uh, forward. So I would love that you share exactly that because I think it's so important nowadays um, as everyone is feeling the urge uh, to live more of who they are with more speed because they really sense in its importance they want to live their purpose but how can they connect 
with other people stronger or even with someone they care about and uh, share more about themselves? Well, that's a great question. And it's a very important question. You know, unfortunately, Bishop and I do work with individuals in relationship and the unfortunate mm -hmm. fact, not unfortunate that we do work with individuals, but unfortunately, the mm -hmm. fact that we find is that most relationships are, are not are not doing really well. And you can measure the quality of your life by the quality of your relationship. Mm -hmm. And that, that's not just with with your mate, but it's mm -hmm. with yourself, first and foremost. It's with nature. It's with money. It, we, we have a relationship with everything, with our health and fitness, with our diet, all yes. those things. So very broadly speaking, you can measure the quality of your life by the quality of your relationship. And so we're very passionate about that. Our relationship is quite unique, and we both feel very blessed. And the short story is we we both met when we were kind of broken, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I had gone through a tremendous crash and burn and, and a crisis, and I was I was angry, and and I was broken, and I was mentally, emotionally, spiritually just shattered, physically yeah. shattered. And we can talk about the specifics of that if you'd like. But nonetheless, I met Beersheba very shortly thereafter. And at the time, I was I was homeless. And this was 10 years ago, not that long, long ago, just 10 years ago. I was homeless. I was alone. I was $20 million in debt. So I, I was not a real attractive prospect. And Beersheba... Um, had just gotten out, and, and she can talk for herself too, obviously, mm -hmm. but had just gotten out of, of a, a bad breakup in a relationship, and she was very disillusioned. And so both of us were not in a great space, but she saw something in me that I I couldn't see in myself even at the time. She believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. And, and so she came to work for me initially. And I was again, $20 million in debt and homeless. And, and she said, I want to work with you. She heard me speak at a convention and she was really attracted to the message yeah. and the miss mission. Mm -hmm. And I, I think to my energy too, of just, yeah, <laughs> there was an energy there. <laughs> well, you were you said something about, I was just really raw and it was and, just raw and real. And it's something that you don't see um, the industry he's associated with. So it was very, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, refreshing. It was very refreshing to see that and to be able to relate and to see that, oh, we are the same. So that was. And unfortunately, so many of us in personal development, spiritual mm -hmm. development, call it what you will, tend to put on this front, this facade, right. that everything's great and everything's rosy. Yeah. And yet, you know, we all have our challenges and we all mm -hmm. have our dark side and we all have our 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 um our shortcomings, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I I was the quintessential example of this Superman prior to my fall. And my crash and burn. And I, when I came back, I decided, you know what? I'm going to let people peer behind the curtain. I'm going to be real. And so she saw me, and and I'll do my best to to abbreviate this. But she she said, I want to come to work with you. And I said, I said, well, I, I that's great. And and I, I I'm not in a position to pay you right now. Yeah. She said, that's okay. She said, I have a full time job, and and I'll work for you on the edges of the day. I said, okay. And so starting back 10 years ago, for the first three years, she would get up at 4 a.m. We we now get up at 3 a.m. And there's a reason for that. And it has to do with our relationship. And we can talk about that too. Yes, um, I'd love to hear that. She was a little bit of a late sleeper back then. She'd get up at 4 a.m. Yeah, I was a little lazy. <laughs> yeah, a little lazy. And, and she would work from four to six for me. And then she'd get ready for work and go to work for, for a whole eight hours in her normal job. Mm -hmm. And then she would come home at six and she would work from about six 30 till midnight for me. So she was working eight on eight with no pay 
for the first three years <laughs> and she was working for me. And by the yeah. way, now we're married. And so I work for her. <laughs> if you're married, you know how to tell yeah, that. That's how it works. Yeah. Now. <laughs> but, <Woo>. but, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the role reversal for, sh for sure. <laughs> but but nonetheless, uh, she believed in me and yeah. she saw something in me that I couldn't yet see in myself. And and that that kind of of you know, maybe you've heard in the mythology the Pygmalion effect. Pygmalion built this statue and it was so beautiful, he actually fell in love with it, and he fell so in love with it, the gods blessed him and brought it to life. And that's called the Pygmalion effect. Well, we bring we can bring those things out in another when we see the best. Well, now, you know, fast forward a couple of years, first three years, we were just friends. We worked together. We weren't a couple. No. We've been together for almost 11 years, going on 11 years now. First three years, it was just a working relationship. And and we were best friends. And I think that's really vitally important and and i know bersava agrees mm -hmm. i had never gone into a relationship built upon friendship before and and so we are the best of friends now and we're also a couple and and, and you know everything that goes along with that mm -hmm. but role reversal and how how this this kind of concept pygmalion if i can use that all also comes back because there's a law in this universe as you give you receive that's a fundamental law of the sowing and reaping and and so now fast forward a few years later and we're driving down uh, through studio city on ventura boulevard and bersaville wasn't feeling real great about herself and i i saw greatness in her i i was experiencing that but she didn't see it in herself and i remember saying to her driving down Ventura Boulevard. I'm sure you remember that day. And yes, I do. <laughs> and I she was she was down. And I said, you know what? I, I believe that you're one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my entire life. And unfortunately, people have not recognized that and have not have not encouraged that. And she got really emotional um because it hit home. And so that's kind of how our relationship has been. And hopefully that answers your question to some degree, but but we work at it. We really do work at it and we make it a priority. And yes, now we're business partners too. And Beersaba does her own work and I do my own work and we yeah. do work together. And yet we make our relationship a priority. And I think, unfortunately, particularly with entrepreneurs, that it tends to take a back seat to the business yeah. and and that's unfortunate yeah and i i know both of you uh, are also a big um i mean you're living it and that's why it is in both uh, your 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 way of life living your purpose it's very undistinguishable from right what is life what is work or a private life there is really no separation because you're teaching your life that who you are you're teaching that so and you as i i sense you are really um desiring and a very good example of it i should say of walking your talk uh, of also walking your knowledge but whatever you share you have experienced and if you haven't you will and and you're improving upon Uh, your own growth and as you said so beautifully you are really determined to be uh, transparent um, much more than uh, before in your life and that shows a lot and uh, that is so easy then for people to understand and say oh it's it's doable and they know yeah. it's true they can feel your truth in in it yes yeah, yeah. i would agree on the walk your uh talk Part, very much so it was one of the things that really attracted me to him even when I and then you know because there's that phase you don't know each other then we got to know each other and then I saw that no this is this is really all he really is so that that's very it was very refreshing and it gives people in, in my position then it gives you hope that hey I can I too can do this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah, it's interesting. I, Bishop and I both do one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. intensive work with, with individuals. And I had a client recently <laughs> um, in his early 30s, which, which is a whole different generation, obviously, that certainly than <laughs> mine. And a whole different upbringing and whole yeah. different values and whole different programming. And, and he said to me, and I, and I was talking to him about being authentic and being integrous. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you know, me on social media, that's not really me. Ooh. And I said, <laughs> why not? I said, you know, when you see me on social media, that's me. When you see me here, this is me. Right. When you see me behind the scenes, you will not see anything different. And that's that's called integration. And mm -hmm. one of the greatest problems that Bearsabo and I find for individuals that create pain and suffering is a lack of integration. Mm -hmm. You know, external diversity is wonderful. You know, it, it brings it brings a wealth of of positions, a wealth mm -hmm. of conversation, a wealth of information, but internal diversity is chaos. Right. And, and so what we need is inner unity. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't experience that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's work. It, it really is work because when you look at how we are conditioned, we're conditioned and psychology tells us from the age of 14 and younger, we're conditioned conditioned by external sources, our parents, our clergy, our teachers, our social environments, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. And those things lock in pretty much according to behavioral sciences, and they don't change much. And and so now we, we fast forward to 30, 40, 50, 60, and yeah. we've got all these voices inside and all these separate parts inside and all this diversity inside. We got dad's voice and mom's voice and and we've got social media voice and we've got friends voice and and grandma's voice and all these things that that are pulling at us and we it's very difficult not impossible but it takes a commitment mm -hmm. to become integrated it really does and yet it's worth it it's absolutely worth it and and Bearsa, but I I love for you to talk some of that because you have a lot of experience Bearsa, but both of us have had some real challenging backgrounds mm -hmm. and those challenges i'll speak for myself and then i'd love her to tell you a little bit about her but um i don't want to go through them again don't get me wrong you know <laughs> i it's been you know 20 million dollars in debt and homeless at 54 years of age that's not fun no. that's frightening and and yet obviously now i'm not homeless and i'm not alone and <laughs> and so those things here's the hope you have a power yeah. in you. Uh, you have a power working through you that's greater than anything life can throw at you. And when you when you recognize that and you open up to that, then that that power really wants your abundance. It wants your fullness. It wants your happiness. And it wants you to be the greater conduit to be able to to participate in that and to experience that so i i'd love for you to talk a little bit yeah. about some of your challenges and where uh, how far you've come well i i can okay so i can put it in um uh, i've had a rough really rough bringing up childhood and a lot of challenges i mean i i was born and raised in in iran as a child and there was a time when i was at war so first childhood memory is bombs dropping in my neighborhood um, from there, my family had to escape the country uh, at the risk of being caught in the middle of the desert. So we're being smuggled out. Um, so there's a lot of trauma there. And, and and then I got into drugs and I got into bad environments and making a lot of horrible cho choices. Got into um, smoking and drinking and all that. So you could take a person and say, okay, this person is pretty scarred up. They've got a lot of black you know, emotional bags of issues and you, where are you supposed to go from there when you have so much pain, you don't see the light. So, and starting from, if you, if you are at that point, I will tell you that if you work on yourself and do the type of work that we're talking about here, you can clean all that up Yes, and you can literally feel like 
you give yourself a second chance to be born anew, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea uh, that uh, we can always start now. And I think in uh, on your book, it says, you know, it's, uh, I have to read it. Uh, when should now be, uh, yeah, when, when should, should now be good time to start? It's like, <laughs> and I think there is, when we just make a decision now, whatever is behind really nourish us, uh, helps us uh, share our, our experience. But the new focus, the new direction we set, we decide to walk mm -hmm. and we can walk it the way we desire. And uh, that is important. If I can give something along for other people, it's, it's exactly that. Yeah. What was, was. And it didn't matter how you did it and maybe you didn't understand it. But from this moment on, it can and will function in a different way if you put your heart to it, your mind, and you start uh, turning on so many other things. Also, the, the dedication, yeah. the moment you decide to or you start walking or you set the intention, um, everything else starts aligning to it. If it yeah. really comes from this deep inner determination, uh, right yeah you can both speak to that uh, too and uh, then the unfathomed can happen and if we don't plan too much but we know what we really desire and also what we need for ourselves and it's there i use also the word need then it 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 functions and we are dedicated and everything else moves into in into its space and also, so the beautiful thing when you were speaking about um, uh, relationships, so the moment I make a decision, you make the decision, we make a decision, right? And I begin to change, transform, doesn't matter what kind of vocabulary word, dissolve old things and build and create new things. The people around us can link into it. And it um, ignites others to become also more who they are because they're also pulled along with you out of um, sometimes old patterns. And sometimes, yeah, they move backwards before they fall and walk forwards. So be patient, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we have to, if you make a decision to start, stay open, stay soft, stay gentle with yourself. Uh, yeah. Arthur spoke to that, right? Um, uh, th that we don't talk too much and, and the relationship with us, that we gentle, soft to ourselves and also the others surrounding us. And then the magic yeah. can happen. The unfathomed can appear. Yes, that is true. 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 Ma magic, the thing, you, you, I like the word magic. You know, magic... Um, as defined by the esoteric traditions, which I, I've been very, very blessed. I, mm -hmm. I was schooled at at t School of Business. I was a C-suite consultant and worked with executives in business. And so I have a real strong business background, mm -hmm. strong sales background. And yet I also have uh, been inducted into three shamanic traditions. I've, I've, I've studied in, in two very solid mystery schools and and so I've been exposed to a vast array. I was raised in the Christian tradition, which I have tremendous respect for. My father was a Protestant minister, and and yet I branched out. I one of my mentors, major mentor, was the highest ranking Zen monk outside of Japan, and and he was a Roshi. And so I've I've had this real eclectic background. And one of the things that came to me when you were speaking. It, a couple things actually is that in the mysteries it states there's there's an axiom that states filled with understanding of its its meaning source god filled with understanding of its perfect law and here's the point i'm guided moment by moment along the path of liberation now the uh, ego identity doesn't like that we we want to know well, what's going to happen in the next six months and year? Yeah. But according to the mysteries, what I have to do is I have to take the step today. Mm -hmm. I have to get up today and do 
a hundred percent. You know, we're going to be on a podcast with Mylene. I'm going to be a hundred percent present. <laughs> no, today we have that scheduled. Yeah. And so, so, you know, spirit, God, universal intelligence sent that to us. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be a hundred percent present and a hundred percent prepared in that podcast. And I'm going to get off the podcast. And if I do this right, I'm going to feel like, okay, I gave it a hundred percent. And, and then what happens after that? Well, I don't know. Um, you know, and that's, that's not my job. That's God's job. That's not my job. My job is to be guided moment by moment and, whatever presents itself in front of me is to give a hundred percent to that today. You know, Bearsop and I have an objective to, to lay down every single night uh, as we go to sleep mm -hmm. and to feel like I gave a hundred percent to everything that I potentially had handed to me, <clears throat> excuse me, handed to me mm -hmm. or presented to me today. And if I can say, if I can answer that truthfully, then it's a good day. And I've done God's will and I, and I've lived according to my purpose. And so that's really what it's all about. The, the second thing that came to me when you were speaking, and I'm not remembering exactly what it was that you said, but here's the, here's the hard reality that a lot of people don't like. And I don't like it either sometimes, but every significant breakthrough oh, yeah. is preceded by a what? Breakdown. By a breakdown, you know, and and it, a lot of people right now are coming to us and they're going, oh, my, my God, the world is going to hell. Well, not my world. You know, that that's no, I think the world is in transition yes. and and there's no place for a new emergent. Even in science, we know there's no place for something new to emerge until there's a space for that emergent. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to be willing to create the space. Yeah. We, we've got to be willing to let go now of of what was to allow the emergent of what shall be. And and that's what we're going through. It's not easy. You know, the breakdown is, is, is uncomfortable. It really is. And yet when I went through my major fall and lost everything external, what I can tell you is on the backside I wouldn't trade a moment of it because because what I became inside yeah. was so much more valuable than anything I possessed outside. So anyway, again, for the viewer, if you're having difficult times, we know difficult times and I will never, ever minimize that. No. I won't minimize that one iota because it's not easy, not even when you share these kind, this kind of information. It's never easy. It's never easy. But it's not supposed to be easy. You know, easy and great cannot coexist in the yeah. same space. See, but it will be just that much sweeter when it is. That's right. When you could get through it. And you and you can and you will if mm -hmm. you just remember that once again, there's a power working through you that is greater than anything life could ever throw at you. And when you become a greater conduit of that, and there's there's work to be done to be a conduit it's you have to become a clean conduit and if you're if you're gunked up technical term with with all these these unresolved emotional sure. issues and trauma then the energy is not going to be able to flow through get stuck you get stuck yeah it looks like you know even when i was speaking at the beginning right you you, you light it's like uh, your particles in your body they are all in their natural rhythm you have worked hard to find uh, those uh, places and give them a movement again this movability to be in their own uh, vibration right and then so uh, whatever needs to come through comes through and that light um, there is uh, no uh, contraction and uh, you're not holding using strengths to uh, hold tight on some areas of your body right mm -hmm. you you uh, put um, release dissolve whatever we want to call it love warmth <laughs> healing uh, into it and as you said you, you use the word uh, work but it is really the dedication to figure out how can I, I soften that? How can I support it to get in its own, own rhythm? 
that the light can uh, shine through or energy can flow, wisdom can uh, flow through. Uh, because yes, we are this uh, conduit uh, that from the earth goes up, from the skies goes down. But everyone, most importantly, it comes out of you then because you put your own little mix <laughs> to it. Where these uh, uh, experiences you went through or uh, Beersheba and uh, James went through it, it, they gave you the flavor. They gave that extra strength. And you're able to understand through that other people more intensely. And also, I think that is what helps other people you 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 support a move quicker because there is like, uh, ooh, it feels... It's like they, this force, they get to carry it right through it because you're so porous. Oh, there's a porous is a, a good thing in that moment. <laughs> where it's a porous, so they can get to where they want to get uh, so much faster. So I have um, a question. Is that something normally you're born with, both of you? And did you notice that already when you were a child? Where there, do you have any memories where uh, you can go back and say, oh, I, I sensed that or I thought that for a moment, but then life took over and I totally forgot it. Um, so that others maybe can remember also in them that they have that uh, that strength, that they can uh, remember who they are, and that they're this beautiful light being um, to be here on this earth and 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 they have a reason for being here and, and bringing change and harmony and balance and love and freedom. Do you remember, and Bersabar, maybe I'm, I'm going to ask you now for a moment, even though you had, you know, these extreme bombings, you had to escape from your homeland when the land normally nourishes us, right? Gives us feed. You had to leave your culture. You had to adapt and adapt under very stressful um uh, a moment surroundings and not just you know a, a little bit over and over and over and that for years and then you even in a way yeah not punish i don't want to use punish you said but you you rebelled and said ah, i want more i'm going to destroy more of me but that destroying yeah. more of you dissolved you really were dissolving old to be you do you have moments where you recognize that in the younger you that now you can go back that oh it was there so i'm learning now to remember who i am yeah, so mm, this is a hard, this is a difficult question in a way. I do have, I and I believe with the people that I also work with, we find that there is a specific moment in your life, in, in your childhood, it's normally in your childhood, between seven and uh, uh, below, where you're, you're, I can almost say you're whole before you start becoming fragmented. And there is a moment if I it, we when we find it, it's like this pure um, centeredness inside of you. It's like right, and you can feel it right in the center of your chest too, not in your heart, but in the center of your chest. Mm -hmm. And from having that memory, and it's a feeling. And what what I work on with my clients is we focus on on the feeling, then we go back and we find the situation or the memory or the. Um, when it was actually present and once you tap into that then you're like okay i i found it and here it is even even if it's faint you found it so then you start working on all these other things and now you have a reference point of what you can become and what i've learned from doing all this work on myself with um the help of james is you once you start cleaning all these out, getting getting all this gunk out of the way, and that feeling becomes it's then it starts transforming into what it actually is, which is very powerful. It it's this life force within us that's that we came in with that's been gunked up because of what has happened to us, and we didn't have the coping me mechanism when we were younger, so. It gets clogged up in a way 
and it's there and i and i believe that we all do possess this and that we all did come in here with some kind of a purpose to do something within this life because everything is connected to everything and we see all of life is spiritual so for us to move in unison with it is moving with that uh, life force that you were brought in with if that makes sense yeah and and i'd like you know because one of her um Mylene, Mylene's, um Mylene, sorry my <laughs> question was did you feel this early on and i I do. I, I, yeah, I, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that because you were not, you know, we hear in psychology, which is my background, um, nature and nurture. You know, we come in with a nature and then yeah. our nurture is our conditioning and our, our upbringing and our parenting and all those things. And you didn't have a lot of good nurture. No, I did not. Um, <laughs> just didn't. They it, meant well. And, yeah. and and no, so, I didn't. But still, you were you were really kind of bizarre in a sense because you weren't nurtured into those things per se. But you, I think her question was, did you feel like you had that? Well, even in, so, in that sense, I would say yes. I I did. I had some. I would I would have conversations with um. I would say I call it God. I I don't know what it was then as a kid, but it was a force that I felt and it was strong. It was very strong. And and here's here's the other part I will say that individuals that do have something like this, mm -hmm. it it becomes if you don't know how to control it, it becomes very destructive because you don't know what it, it is and you don't know how to control it and it kind of it becomes it turns, it becomes destructive. And you start doing things because you don't understand what's happening to kind of shut it off or shut it down or, you know, things like that. So I do, I, I do. And I, and the reason why I hesitate to say that is because I don't like to think that, you know, one of us is, has something more than the other. I don't believe in that. I, I feel like we've all had something like this, you know, coming into this world and we've just lost um we've just lost our touch with it we're just not in tune with it where whatever environment we grew up in didn't nurture us into it to 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 be able for us to be able to keep it let's yeah. put it that um i have a strong belief in reincarnation i can't yeah. prove it um no one can and yet every great spiritual tradition including mystical christianity mm -hmm. believes in reincarnation it makes sense to me because when I look at nature in the fall, the, the plants die. And then in the spring, they come back to life. You know, the, the snake sheds its skin and, and the caterpillar goes in the cocoon and is reborn as a butterfly. And, and so there's a lot of, a lot of signals to me. And if you disagree with me as a viewer, I'm, I'm totally good with that, but it just makes sense to me that there there is and 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 i'm also a big fan of of quantum physics and thermodynamics number one law in thermodynamics tells us energy can never be created or destroyed all that ever was or ever shall be is already here mm. god created everything initially nothing needs to be created it's already created and that's the number one law in thermodynamics called the conservation of energy so all that to say i believe personally that some of us have been around for a while and and you can kind of tell based upon the things you're attracted to that are weird when you're young <laughs> and then i use weird as a technical term but i'll give you a for instance i was raised in a fundamental christian household my dad was a protestant mm -hmm. minister i started studying buddhism when i was 18 in Oklahoma, and I don't know if your viewers, you know, Oklahoma <laughs> is, is the buckle of the Bible Belt. You it's, had something drive you. I was right down the street from Oral Roberts University. You can't get any more fundamental than that. <laughs> and I started studying Buddhism in the household of a Protestant uh, minister. Now, why is that? You know, it's weird. I was attracted to those things. Yeah. Well, I happen to believe and 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 so I'm going to answer the question too. I <laughs> I was attracted 
with a with an insatiable appetite mm -hmm. and desire to figure out how this universe work. I was the kid in Sunday school, the preacher's kid that was going, wait a minute, excuse me, God created, you know, God created the the entire earth on seven days. Well, isn't a full day of one rotation of the earth. So so if the earth wasn't here yet, then it had to be more than seven days because the earth didn't rotate on the first day because the earth wasn't here yet. And and the teachers are going, oh, my God, what are we going to do with this kid? And and God moved upon the face of the water. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. There was no water yet. So so what <laughs> did God move on? Because there was no water. I was that kid and I was constantly questioning yeah. and 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 pushing back in a in a genuinely interested inquisitive way yeah. and i wasn't getting the answers so that's what what led me to study the ancient traditions and and to you know egyptian mythology and and all the things that i've been really blessed to be exposed to and and that started when i was really really young i you know, I, I was I was bullied as a kid. I was not popular. I was skinny and scrawny. I was a bookworm and and I didn't go out and play with with my friends. I sat in my bedroom and read books. I just read books and I wanted to figure out because ultimately I thought if I can figure out how this universe works, then maybe my life will work better. That that was my driver. You know, maybe I can get past my insecurities and my pain. And and so that's why I say today, pain is the mother of all growth. And that's not popular either, you know, because most of us don't like pain. But the fact is, pain is not a signal to suffer. Pain is a signal to grow. Pain is a signal that life gives us that something's out of whack. Well, my knee's hurting. Okay, well, something's out of whack. Maybe your hamstrings are too tight. Maybe you need to do you know, some more, some more exercise, maybe you don't need mm -hmm. to be sedentary, maybe you need to roll out your quadriceps. I don't know. But but pain is the mother of all growth. It's the thing. And and I'll just say this, you know, one of the schools that I've been schooled in is the Toltec tradition, which is a shamanic tradition out of South America. Mm -hmm. I studied with a Toltec shaman for a number of years in the Andes Mountains back and forth. And, and in the Toltec tradition, which is brilliant, they say most of us never take the action necessary to make the change we need to make until we're backed into a corner with a dagger hanging over our head. Now, that's pretty graphic, and that's how the Toltec yeah. tradition operates, and that's why I like them, because they don't pull any punches. But that's a fact. You know, when you're backed into a corner and a dagger's hanging over your head, you're, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I've got to do something mm -hmm. here, because... If I don't, I'm going to die. Or if I don't, I'm going to be miserable for the rest of my days. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what it takes for most of us to get to the point to really take the action to move forward and create what we desire and deserve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's a interesting thing. I sometimes uh, I figured out one day to materialize things. They really don't materialize until they're needed. It's the same thing. Sometimes if there's a... Uh, wishful thinking it would be nice yeah maybe we we practice and 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 tiny things but uh if it's needed it appears and it even in tiny things but big things are not needed so often or uh, intense but if you're in in uh, uh life something is life-threatening that mm -hmm. moment yes it is needed and then everything comes together what you've ever learned and you grow in that moment because you go uh, uh, beyond and so many other things uh, come together. And then you go, oh, I'm able to do this. I was able to survive this or uh, create this or support uh, uh, someone else. Yeah, you went uh, through a lot of uh, growth yourself and you wrote about that in your book, Harmonic Wealth. And I invite everyone uh, to go and uh, read that book because especially if you're interested in um, surpassing something difficult, heavy in your life that you think it is impossible to go through or get through. And you have a beautiful experience um, that James shares uh, so openly. And um, I will put a post and a link to um, uh, that book and you can 
talk to to James anyway about this. But, but I would really be fascinated because everyone can you read a book. But I would I am really curious now of both of you is what do you see is coming? You're both very in tune. You're very on purpose. Um, and your purpose here on planet Earth is the simple, right? It's not a profession. It's your dedication of life. Um, what do you see is coming for us? Or what, in better words, what are you noticing? Are you changing in your life to prepare? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> he's giving you <laughs> we're encouraging people to read harmonic wealth and actually Bersheba and i would love to give every one of your viewers a free copy of that yes. wow uh, you yeah. want to give them the link yeah you just go to uh, harmonic success.com forward slash book and you'll get an email and you get an invitation to which is a private community and in there it's a harmonic success community, and you can you'll have access to the ebook, the audio version, and the movie. So that's our gift. We, to we you. Have a full feature ah. film on yeah. harmonic wealth as well. So please enjoy that on so, us. So yeah, that's our gift to to your oh, viewer. Beautiful, and thank the, you. The great work that you're doing. So um, anyway, harmonicsuccess.com forward slash book, and yeah. we'd, we'd love to get that in your hands. Now back. I to know. The, now, back like... to the million questions <laughs> okay so where are we going where are we going <laughs> that's a big question yes okay yes. so i will say from what i feel what i feel is that the most important thing people can do for themselves to prepare themselves for what is happening and what is coming down the line is to be adapt to be to be adaptable and mm -hmm. to be adaptable mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, changing times and to work on yourself and to have emotional strength, not intellectual strength, but emotional strength. And what I mean by that is not let your emotions run you, but you have control over them. So that and when you have that, then you're able to be adaptable. And when you're adaptable, you're no longer stuck on this false self identity that we've built for ourselves. And that kind of falls apart. And that's the best state you can be in for where we're headed. Because if you pay attention to what's going on, things are falling apart. I mean, they're, they're, for some, it's very scary. Uh, it could be frightening. And yet, if you can see the bigger picture and you can see beyond what is falling apart in front of our eyes, the long term is going to be magnificent. Mm-hmm. How yes. you have to look at it, and and it yeah. doesn't it doesn't mean it'll be easy in the interim. No, it's it not. It won't. I mean, but if you if you look at, and let, let me just say this before I I address the question specifically, when things appear to be falling apart, mm -hmm. they're actually coming together on a grander scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I can tell you that with absolute certainty. Oh, for sure. From personal experience, mm -hmm. not from book knowledge, but yeah. from experience. Yeah, things appear to be falling apart. They're coming together on a grander and greater scale. And so have faith. Mm -hmm. And 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 faith is not blind. Faith, true faith from, from the mystery school perspective, which I have a tremendous respect for, mm -hmm. is is well, I'll quote I'll even quote Paul, the Christian, the Christian uh teacher, Apostle Paul, who said, Faith is a substance. It's a substance. What does that mean? It's 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 got it's got something to it. It's mm -hmm. not just ethereal. Mm -hmm. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of which it are not yet seen. So mm -hmm. it's the substance of things which are not yet seen. So true mystical faith, and, and the definition of a mystic is a person who has a personal experience of God. You know, they don't believe in God. They have a personal experience of God, mm -hmm. and that's, that's very, very personal. So I can't tell you what it is for you because it's personal. But but from a mystical perspective, mm -hmm. to have faith is grounded in experience and references. So so here's what you do. You know, I'm I'm going to bet. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Every single person viewing today or listening today has had some really difficult times in their life where they've thought, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That's part of all of our experiences. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have what it takes. I don't know if I'm going to make it. And you might be there today. And so if you are there today, let me let me give you encouragement because what I can promise you is if you're here today, you made it. Yeah. The fact that you're here today and you have time to watch a podcast or listen to a podcast means you made it. Well, James, I'm in debt and I got credit cards and I, you know, the mortgage and this. You're still here. But you're doing it. You're doing it. You're <laughs> or else here. you wouldn't be listening to you this. You know, but I don't have enough money in saving. Okay, now you're putting parameters on it. Yeah. You know, I'm guided moment by moment along the path of liberation. Mm -hmm. And so from a mystical perspective, faith is grounded in references. And I, I learned this when I was I was sitting on a mountaintop once and I was really, really down. And I've been down a lot in my life. I've had a lot of dark times. Yeah, yes, you have. And I was and I was saying, I was talking to God, and I was saying, why why is, is everything so difficult? You know, my heart is good. I'm, I'm attempting to do good things in the world. Why is it so hard? When's it going to click for me? And 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 this voice came back to me and said, James, you've always been guided, protected, and loved. And I thought, wow, I guess I have. You know, I was involved in a horrible accident, and maybe some of your viewers know about that. Maybe they don't. Yeah. Um, but I was involved in a horrible accident, and and I got prosecuted for a crime, and the state wanted me to go away for thirty years, and and that's that's jarring, and and it was an accident. It and and yet, if if the state had gotten what they wanted, I wouldn't be here here on this podcast today. Obviously, you know, yes, I went through some crash and burn and I I lost all things external and, and I went yeah. through some really tough times. And yet I'm here and, and the state didn't get what they wanted. So so I could look at it and go, yeah, but I lost everything. No, I look at it and say I gained everything. I lost everything external. Mm -hmm. And yet I was guided, and protected and loved because because the things that I gained as a result of losing quote, end quote, are vastly more immense than the things I ever lost. So mm -hmm. um, now I don't even know what your question was. I, 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 some, I tend <laughs> uh, to get that's on a, a goal, But I have a go, but, you know, move, we're moving <laughs> forward. Something came into my head while you were speaking and uh, I, I sinked into your experience where you were uh, in, in, in prison. And what comes is, we have to be, we're all healers, also whoever is listening. You are a healer. So sometimes we're in spots where we think we shouldn't be, but we're supposed to be. Because again, there we're emanating. Are. We're not just soaking in interesting or, or emanating healing energy when everything is bright. We do have to go in at, to places and let even walls soak it up. Other people soak it up, share, go into conversation with everything existing. So, and th that just fits <laughs> to, to you, James, uh, to both of you, right? Mm -hmm. Where were we? Or even in my life, in certain situations, why do you take suddenly a certain road and are in that location? Um, and you didn't take that one because so often we need to be in places. So mm -hmm. what we exchange, the energy, uh, the light, our wisdom, um, or the healing can go into a movement and yeah. uh, be exchanged. So it feels sometimes horrible uh, to us, but sometimes it doesn't and it still happens. <laughs> and then you're, you're lucky. Uh, but I wanted to give that point as well that we're in this constant exchange, and mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the really important point, again, going back to faith, going back to guidance, guidance moment by moment, is that your life, and I, I'm talking to every single person today, and I'm talking to myself, your life is perfect. It's unfolding perfectly. Well, it doesn't feel perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, 
that's because you don't have God's perspective. We have this this proximate perspective of of just right here mm -hmm. and here's here's what it looks like, here's what it feels like. But God has this life has this broad perspective of how this leads to this, leads to that, leads yeah. to that, leads to that. And all of a sudden, oh my God, look, you know, who would have ever guessed when I asked God to give me a message that would would really help a large mass of people who knew when i asked for that that it would take me through prison now honestly if i'd have known i may not have asked be careful what you ask for because if i'd have known you know but now in retrospect hindsight is always 2020 in retrospect i see the perfection of it doesn't mean i want to do it again uh and yet and yet I see it all. I remember my Zen master saying to me once, James, how do you ever think you can help a suffering world if you've never suffered? Yeah, good sense. I didn't like that when he said that, you know, but he was right. And and so that's what makes Beresaba so good at at her intuitive healing. And 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 it makes anyone who it really you look at anyone through all mythology, the hero of any mythology, whether it's Hercules or whomever it is, is only a hero because of the challenges and the difficulties mm -hmm. they've overcome. That's what makes someone heroic. Yeah. And and so many times, um, Mylene, the younger generations, they sing about, oh, I want to be heroic. I want to be a hero. Well, okay, well, maybe you need to understand what that means. Then you're going to have a very challenging life. If you look at anyone, whether it's the Christ or the Buddha or, or anyone who's made tremendous impact in the world, <clears throat> they didn't have an easy life. Right. They had a challenging life because it's, it's overcoming those challenges that give us the strength and the fortitude and the wisdom and the experience yeah. to be able to not only do that for ourselves and to build our own resilience, but to be able to share that with other people. Mm. Mm. Very, very, very beautifully said. <laughs> wow. It, it, both of you, I could talk for hours and days. You have such a vast wisdom, uh, experienced uh, assembly. So many. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Everyone, uh, you have to connect with those two, uh, with Beersheba and James, because they have yeah. nuggets for you, I think, um, that will catapult you forward in the speed you desire and in the moment. And you can feel safe and you can let yourself fall because you will know that you will be understood. And... Uh, listen to in a with an extreme depth mm. and uh, so thank you uh, both of you for being who you are to being this uh, courageous right the courageous having this heart i love that word courageous that's cur, the heart in it right that you have that heart in it to uh, follow what you think is a needed is uh, a desired for your life and that uh, you don't give up. So everyone reach out. I will put all the information there into the show notes so you can reach them uh, with ease. So both of you would like to invite uh, for a final word or sentence or a gift, spoken gift uh, to the listener for their path into the next months and days. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> Let me go for the, it. The master communicator here. <laughs> um, You're communicating the whole time, even in your silence. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I would just say a couple of things. First of all, it's time to remember the things you've forgotten to remember mm -hmm. and forget the things you've forgotten to forget. And that's a tongue yeah. twister, I know, but I'll repeat it. Remember the things you've forgotten to remember and forget the things you've forgotten to forget. There's a seed of greatness buried within you. And it's just waiting to be fanned into flames of ultimate 
passion and achievement. That seed is not outside of you. It's not contingent upon oh. anything outside of you. It's born within you. It's your God-given uh, birthright. And so just remember that and nurture that. And I'll just punctuate that with a quote from the Christ when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. All things. All thing is everything. Seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. Yeah. Hopefully that's helpful. I'll, I'll add to that. The kingdom of heaven is within. It's true. <laughs> that's true. That's a part of it. You know, it, it's an exchange. Yeah. We're, we're never alone. So if that can be any encouragement for everyone, yeah, we're not okay. alone ever. No. We have cats. <laughs> Puccini just showed up, right? Uh, we have friends. We have ourselves. We have plants. Uh, everyone is there. The birds, the sunshine, the mm -hmm. stars, and so much more. Yes. yes. So thank you both, uh, Elizabeth and uh, James, for taking the time to open yourself up to... <laughs> questions and sharing so deeply uh, with the audience uh, so they can uh, grow become the best that they are right mm -hmm. and uh, with the speed they desire to uh, become it and um, I thank you with my full heart it was beautiful conversing with you and I think we do need to do that you can have to come back it's and important. everyone the best to you Soak up that energy that both are sending you, this brightness, these tips of getting back up on your feet whenever you tumble or maybe mm -hmm. just slowly fall softly to the ground or if it's a little harsh and uh, know you become, you come out of it vaster, larger, bigger brighter and uh, you will be able to do things much uh, faster so have you heard a lot of words of speed so that must be very important uh, in the future uh, that we are able to be fast and sometimes faster than time every one of you who is listening so everyone i wish you the best thanks for listening to the moving uh, to on this podcast i'm mylene the host and i send you a lot of love and bye bye everyone god bless thank you